Hey, how are you guys doing? I was out in the garage again, so I thought about you. You know, one of my favorite times of the year is the county fairs. Can you imagine going to a county fair that was open for an entire year? Well, we used to have what was considered the World's Fairs. And there were some really important ones, especially the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. But one of my favorites would be the 1964 New York World's Fair. They utilized a lot of the effort from Walt Disney Studios. So I want to start off with this. This is a really interesting piece. This is an original camera that was sold at the 1964 World's Fair. As you can see, it's a Kodak camera. It has the emblem on top. It says 1964 World's Fair flash camera, which means these would have had the bulbs that you'd have to buy. They're a one-time flash because the bulb would explode. But I just wanted to be able to share this with you. But I have some other items here as well. I've got a cute little tray that shows all the different exhibits. And then I have this one here. These are actual tin trays that were available. This little tin uh, tray, tray here. Uh, it has the Unisphere in the middle right here, and it says this beautiful Unisphere is a symbol of the 1964-1965 New York World's Fair. The theme of this fair was called Peace Through Understanding. It actually opened April 22, 1964, and closed April 21, 1965. I've already made reference to the fact that the Disney company was quite involved, and so a couple, re a couple areas that they were involved the most would be first they partnered with Pepsi to introduce It's a Small World. They also partnered with General Electric to bring in the Carousel of Progress, which it can still be seen uh, over there in Florida. We actually had it at Disneyland and then it moved over to Florida where it resides today. They also partnered with Ford and presented the Ford Magic Skyway, which was pretty much the precursor to the People Mover. But what was interesting about that is most of the items from that ride-along attraction came back as part of the primeval world and the Grand Canyon that you experience on the train. And then the last one would be that they parted with the state of Illinois to create great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Uh, so one of the sculptors at the studios, Blaine Gibson, was actually able to access an original cast of Abraham Lincoln's face and use it to sculpt the face that we still observe today at all the theme parks across the world. I have a National Geographic. This is uh, from 1963. And inside the National Geographic, they are showing some of the items that will be debuting at the 1964 World's Fair. So here they have uh, a Neanderthal that they're working on within the sculptors. That was for uh, the Ford presentation of the Magic Skyway. And then I also have here, one page over, here are Imagineers working on the design uh, of the animatronic for Abraham Lincoln. And again, all of this was done here at the studios in Burbank, California. Then it was shipped to New York and then brought all the way back here and presented at Disneyland. Uh, but there they are, the sculptors working with an actual face mask. Uh, it was a plaster mask of Abraham Lincoln's face. So, nonetheless, I just thought it was something kind of interesting to me and I hope that you enjoyed it. Maybe you went to the 64 World's Fair. I'd love to hear that you did. Go ahead and comment below. Maybe you wish that you could or maybe you've been to some of the attractions that you can see the reminiscence of the 64 World's Fair. Please comment below and if you enjoyed this as much as I did, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll talk soon.